When the British pulled out of India, they left behind an entire civilization. Hmm, civilization. How do you spell that? Um, as F A M I N E or J A W -L, L I A N W A L A B A G H? American far right news anchor Tucker Carlson of Fox News went on air to give tribute to Queen Elizabeth II in what was less of a tribute and more of a racist glorification of the British Empire. Now, the two things that this guy made clear was that one, he absolutely loves British Indian architecture and infrastructure. And two, for some reason, we should be thankful to the British for it. Now, this blinds him from seeing the obvious that everything that the British did, from infrastructure to legal system, was for their own gain because, let's be real, they planned to stick around. But wait, wait, Tucker, what should we be thankful for again? A language, a legal system, schools, churches, and public buildings, all of which are still in use today. Okay, public buildings. The famous Writers Building in Kolkata originally served the writers of the British East India Company, hence the name. Gateway of India. It was erected in 1911 to commemorate the landing of King George V and Queen Mary, not for Gen Z kids to go on dates 100 years later. Look at the Victoria Memorial. It was built in tribute to Queen Victoria. Perhaps you remember her. And the Victoria Terminus in Bombay that you're continuously drooling on? As Shashi Tharoor pointed out, it was constructed for the British to profit from their businesses because Bombay was, and still is, a port city. The British laid railways, developed roads and constructed buildings not to develop Indian social and national life, but to meet the needs of the empire's administration and commerce. A language, a legal system. Okay, but tell me something. What good was a legal system if it wasn't us making the laws in the first place? What good was a legal system that could not punish people like Reginald Dyer and Michael O'Dwyer for a massacre that killed thousands of innocent people? And what good was a legal system that used taxes to squeeze the poor peasant of most of his earnings? They helped end the transatlantic slave trade, as well as the ritual murder of widows in India. But what you probably don't know is that Lord Bentinck, the Governor General of India who outlawed Sati in British India, had hoped this outlaw would wash out the foul stain upon British rule because word about Sati was really spreading around. And of course, the British Empire's reputation was at risk. And that is the point. What appears to be British benevolence was never about us. It was always about the Crown. Look, I'm not saying Tucker has to be an expert in the history of the British Raj, but to say that British rule was the only stepping stone for India to the modern world is such a gross and lazy analysis, isn't it? There's a massive difference between constructive globalization and imperialism. India has always enjoyed an exchange of ideas as well as commodities with the outside world. In fact, when the British came to India, our share in world trade was 27%. When they left, it was 2%. And when they came here, our share of the world economy was around 23%. And when they left, it was less than 4%. The very least you can say about the English is that they took their colonial responsibilities seriously. They didn't just take things, they added. Here's what Tucker may have really forgotten to mention about the responsible colonizers. He forgot to mention that the Bengal famine of 1943 was a consequence of Churchill's wartime policies. His government was warned repeatedly that the excessive use of Indian resources for the Second World War could result in a famine. But it still continued to export rice from India to elsewhere in the empire. Tucker would have also forgot to mention that the whole basis of responsible British colonialism in India was to be found in the exploitation of the agricultural population, with astronomically high taxes and Indian harvests being used for the benefit of the British industry and the economy. And of course, he forgot to mention about the mass killings by the responsible British colonial police against the Indian population, like the 1913 Mangar massacre along the borders of Rajasthan and Gujarat, the 1919 Jallianwala Bagh massacre in Amritsar, the 1922 Palchitriya massacre in Gujarat, and the 1930 Kissa Khwani massacre in Peshawar, among many, many others. So, Tucker, thank you for your history lesson, but no thank you.